Welcome back. In the last few module, we looked at how you could manage your user and permission and different uh, types of teams you could create and manage their uh, security roles and permissions on a project level. How about if you had in your company, if you had multiple organization, on the left hand side, you would see that there are multiple organizations. How about you wanted to manage and permissions and users management and security permission on the organizational level so that these project underneath any organization can inherit the roles and security permissions from the organization itself if you look at the bottom left you would see that the project setting has now changed to the organization setting any changes you want to make uh, could be inherited uh, to the project itself so like let's look at the if the top features of uh, your organization settings and how you could implement them on your productions environment as well. If you go to the organization setting, uh, we would see that it uh, gives us an overview page and then it gives us with the information about the project and uh, the URL. Uh, at the moment, the URL is uh, uh, dev.azure, which is global and then the name of your organization. Uh, time zone so that whenever you update any work items or anything you could uh, see the time zone uh, you could change owner as well since I am the owner of this organization I could give permission to some uh, other owner as well uh, and by default anybody who has access to, to project collection administration uh, or an organization owner, owner just like uh, this you could grant any users the permission as well so you could change the permission I'm not gonna do that at the moment um, and then if you whenever if you've created a project for a POC or dev uh, kind of uh, thing uh, then you could always delete it from right from here if you go to the projects you could have multiple projects underneath the organization and you could create a new project as well right from here uh, and you would see some of the information like the process of this project and the visibility which is uh, private at the moment you could always rename the project or delete the project as well if you go to the users you would see that users all the users uh, are kind of listed over here and you get uh, which users are into which group if you go to the billing uh, I am using a trial version of Azure DevOps which uh, gives us 1800 minutes of build so whatever builds and releases we were building uh, it had an expiry of 800 minutes per per month and beneath that you'll if you cross that you'll have to wait for the next uh, billing cycle uh, for first five users basic users it's all free if you want to test plans as well as your test plan uh, go to you got to start the test uh, uh, trial as well uh, so right now I'm using the free version which gives me up to five user to use uh, unlimited uh, uh, features of Azure DevOps and I get 1800 uh, minutes uh, for build and if you if you want to set up billing you could always do that uh, link your Azure subscription because why do you need to link your Azure subscription because uh, your Azure if you manage your users uh, your Azure DevOps needs to link with an Azure Active Directory and that's how uh, it could manage the users right from your Active Directory. So that's why it asks for the uh, billing. So you can always uh, set up the billing if you want to have uh, more than five users uh, set up. And there are a lot of uh, features which are missing from the trial, um, like uh, like the custom build agents. Uh, not custom build agent, but uh, if you've uh, exceeded the 1803 minutes, a lot of other features which are limited in the trial version. If you go to the auditing, uh, this is this feature is uh, is especially useful for somebody like who is managing the the Azure DevOps administration, who is the owner and want to audit who has done what at time. Uh, audit events can be can be useful when you want to che check who has changed any certain permissions. Somebody has deleted some bills or deleted any resources. A uh, branch policy was changed, access auditing features, and many more features. You would see that this person has uh, accessed the auditing area and accessed the audit logs a couple of minutes back. Uh, this person has uh, authenticated on this date uh, using this, and you can always export the log in a CSV and JSON and probably present wherever uh, you need. By default, it is turned on. Uh, 
uh, and you always you you can't turn it off uh, uh, and it it stores the data for 90 days and then they are deleted so if you want to kind of store them you could always stream them to a different target now streaming is like whatever logs uh, azure devops generate generates you can always uh, push them to a to a streaming event could be splunk uh, azure monitor um, even grid so you can if you're coming from azure background you can always use uh, monitor logs and put query on top of them and you can save these logs for whatever time period if you want so you could save into azure grid as well it asks for the url and the access key uh, for uh, token uh, for mon azure monitor it asks for the workspace id and uh, the access key and the splunks it asks for the splunk url uh, and the uh, token so that's how you could uh, uh, push different uh, logs and store them forever and uh, stream them and, and churn out useful data whatever is deemed appropriate it churns out data it, it pushes data every five minutes so your data gets refreshed after every five minutes all right so look let's look at the global notification in the project setting we looked at the uh, notification and those notification were uh, like the build completes and they are pretty similar to what you saw in the project setting if you go to the usage uh, the usage uh, gives us uh, the the authentication uh, which user has authenticated uh, at what time with uh, with uh, with status and uh, and the the and the type of application he used to log into the uh, azure devops extension uh, you could always uh, have uh, extension enabled or disabled uh, you would see that uh, we used uh, terraform in our build and release uh, video wherein we looked at uh, we used uh, the terraform extension and that's what it's been said that it's it's, it's it was it was installed you could always uh, go to the security and kind of uh, uh, add or or kind of uh, manage if you if you don't want people to install the extension right away if you want to manage them itself you could do that as well so requested there are no requested at the moment however you could always uh, go to the security and uh, change the setting uh, however you want them to manage it uh, if you see over here uh, it's got a, a project collection administration you could always add users uh, to certain groups and manage the permissions right from the policy permissions uh, tab. Uh, Azure Active Directory at the moment it is not linked to any Active Directory uh, because it's a trial version. However, if you're uh, coming from an organization who which has uh, Active Directory, be it on premises uh, or Azure, specifically Azure Active Directory, you can always uh, connect to Azure Active Directory so that all the users. Um, in uh, registered in your Azure AD could could uh, come up over here and you can always assign them users and permissions the policies uh, these policies are enabled at the organization level you could always have a review of them uh, at the moment uh, these uh, the the policies are uh, are less compared to the paid version in the paid version you see some other policies as well like the requested URL which is uh, missing right over here you get uh, enable active directory conditional access policies so those those sort of features are uh, kind of missing over there but um, in case you want to disable any of them that you don't want public projects uh, access uh, so you could always save it and uh, you don't want such as authentication uh, the build servers and uh, on uh, and those authentication level you could always turn it off and manage then permissions it's pretty same as what we looked at the uh, project level and that's uh, what we've got over here nothing uh, nothing uh, more to discuss right over here uh, in the process we've got the uh, we've got the type of process be it agile basic or whatever whatever process we have selected uh, so it shows over here at the moment it's been uh, agile at the moment and that's why you see one team project right over here 
all right that's pretty much all in the next video we're going to look at the agent pool and how you could manage the uh, how you could secure your agent pool as well that's it for now i'll see you in a while thank you